Yo guys, what the hell is up? I'm Sean from the Net Ninja. This is CSS for Beginners Lesson 10, and today we're going to talk about the Cascade and CSS conflicts. <laughs> so, what is a conflict then? Well, the easiest way to put it is this: it's a conflict, okay? And uh, essentially, what that means is that it's when you have two selectors or two rules with the same selector going after the same tags in your document and you've got properties within those two rules that are different from each other. So you might have one rule that says go after all the spans and colour them red and then later down the line you might have another rule which says go after all the span tags and make them blue. That's a conflict. Right now, you might be sitting there thinking, what the hell is this dude on? I'm not going to make two different selectors for the same tag, right? You might be thinking you're going to put them all in one rule. Now, if that's your attitude, good luck guys. Now, that's not going to happen because as your CSS gets really large, you're not going to know what's going on. You're going to be under a mountain of CSS and you're not going to remember which rules you've done all the time. And your boss wanted this changed, by the way, 10 minutes ago. So you're under pressure to change the color of these span tags. Now you're just going to override it. You're probably going to create your own conflict to do that. And sure, you can go back and neaten it up later, but you need to understand what these conflicts are doing to your CSS, okay? And to understand that, you need to understand the cascade, which we're also going to talk about in this video. So best way to do that is through an example. So we're going to do just that. And like I just said, we'll go after the span tags. Why not? So these four here. So we'll make a rule called span. It's just the element selector. Open our declaration and color them all blue. All right. Now... Underneath, I'm going to do an identical selector, just going after the span tags again and color them all, color them all red. Okay, now what do you think is going to happen here? Well, this is where the cascade comes in. Now, if I say to you the word cascade, what do you think? I think of the word waterfall, or a picture of a waterfall rather. And a waterfall tumbles down from the top, it cascades downwards, starts at the cliff or whatever, a stream at the top, comes down the cliff into the pool at the bottom. And that's exactly what the CSS cascade does. It starts at the top of the document and it reads from top to bottom downwards. Okay, so when we have this CSS file, it comes in when it's loaded and it reads from the top down to the bottom. So it starts here and it says, okay, I've got this span selector here. I'm going to go after all these spans and color them blue. Then right underneath, it's got this other span tag, uh, sorry, span uh, rule, span selector, and it colors them all red. Okay, so because this is the bottommost rule it's applied this last and therefore this one applies okay if you're going to take one thing away from this it's that the cascade runs from top to bottom and that if the selectors are identical and that's important if the selectors are identical then the bottommost rule always wins okay so to prove that i'm going to save this and view this in a browser open this in the explorer and then we'll do it with google chrome and there they are, they're all red, which is what we expected, okay? And again, that's because the CSS is a cascade, runs from top to bottom, it's coming in, colouring them all blue, first of all, with this selector, finding this selector, which is identical, then overriding it and colouring them all red, okay? Now, this is a prime example of a conflict, a CSS conflict. Now, in previous episodes, in previous lessons, I said that we can use embedded styling and inline styling, and I also said that I hated it. And I do, I don't really like it, but if you want to override something, if you want to create your own conflict just on this one page, okay, say your boss comes up to you and says, hey guys, I've got this, uh, I've got this page here, this contact page, and I want the, the, the color of these span tags changing. Don't know why I'm doing an American accent, by the way, that's just what I do in a bottom of voice, okay? Forgive me if that offends you, I'm sorry. Now, what are you going to do? Yeah, you could go into your syntax.css file, and this is the best way to do it, by the way, and find your span rule and change it. But if you're under pressure, you could create your own conflict. You could go into the head of this page, and you could open your style tag, close it off, and then do a rule here, which targets all the span tags again, and then this time color them, I forgot what color I said he wants them, purple. All right, so then the cascade also applies here in the HTML file. It's coming in, coming from top to bottom, finding this link uh, link tag here with the style sheet applied. It's jumping into the style sheet. It's going from the top to bottom again, coloring them blue, then overriding them with red. Then it jumps back out at the bottom of the CSS file, carries on down into the document. It finds this style tag here. And then within that, it finds the span selector, 
which is exactly the same as these again. So you've guessed it, it overrides it and colours them purple. And that's the cascade in action. The bottommost rule is winning because the selectors are identical. So let's save this again and open it up in a browser. And there it is, okay? We've got our uh, span tags all purple now. So that's how it's working. It's going from top to bottom and applying the bottommost rule. Now, we've also got inline styling. So we could come to one of these span tags and say your, your client or your boss or whoever, just you, wants the top span tag coloring differently. I said we can apply a style attribute to this and we can say color uh, green, okay? So what's gonna happen here? Well, again, it's coming from top to bottom. The cascade is in action. It's coming from the top into the style sheet. At the top of this style sheet, it's going to color them blue, then red, then it jumps out at the bottom, comes down into these style tags, colors them purple, goes all the way down the document, and then it finds this span tag and it's saying, hey, what's this? I've got a uh, style attribute applied here, so I'm gonna override this span selector and color it green because I'm doing it directly on the tag. This is the bottom most rule, so it's winning. But then it's coming down to these span tags and these have got no style attributes. So then the bottom most uh, selector or rule for those is this one still up here, this purple. So these are still gonna be purple, okay? Now let's save this and view it in a browser one more time. And there we can see that we've got this top one here, green, which we styled in line, and then all these ones are still from the style tag, a color purple. So hopefully now you understand a bit more about what the cascade is. Remember it runs from top to bottom always. And what a conflict is, it's when you've got identical selectors. Um, it's not only when you've got identical selectors, by the way, you could have a selector which is more specific. For example, I could say body, span, color blue, and then this one, because it's more specific, um, this one would still apply. We're not going to get into that now, but if your selectors are all, way, um, are all identical, then the bottommost selector, which is identical, always wins. That always applies. Okay, so hopefully now you understand what conflicts are too. Like always, if you've got any questions, feel free to comment below and I'll answer all of those. Please, please subscribe or like these videos if you enjoy them. And I'm going to see you guys in the next one.